Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to show you a very practical way of using the new input system in Unity. Now, I created a tutorial showing you how to make an FPS controller from scratch with the old input system. I'll link the tutorial so you can check this out. This is not going to be a tutorial about creating that again. It's going to be taking that which you can get on my Patreon, along with over 205 different scripts, assets and projects and then converting it to the new input system and giving you practical ways of being able to integrate the new input system in your own code. So I will be creating a much, much larger tutorial about the input system, ways to use it in console, ways to use and navigate UIs, and even things like controller remapping, but that will be coming up in the future if people want to see it. Do comment down below if you'd find that interesting. So to get yourself started, you need to go to Window, Package Manager, and if you go to the Unity Registry, and you search for input, you can install the input system if it's not already done. Sometimes when you import it, it might ask you that one of the input systems is not enabled. So you might need to go to edit project settings and then go all the way to the player and scroll down to the configuration and active input handling. And you can choose to use both or choose new. Now you want to go to your project panel, go create, and then right at the bottom is something called input actions. Then you can rename this thing that's been created and we just call it player controls. Then we'll open that up and it'll bring out a new box to have action maps and other things like that. And you can have action maps for a number of different things, whether you want multiple players, whether you want to interact with the UI or anything, but we'll set a new one and we'll just call this our player. And then we can set an action. So each action is going to be a different thing that we're going to do. So in my case, we're going to have move, look, jump, and sprint. So my first action, when I click on it, I can just set this to move. I want to set this as a value. And then I want to set that value as a vector too. We're going to move up and down and left and right in any of the two directions that we want. And then we can be able to set a binding that we want to use. So we have a binding here and we can go to the path and then we can click on gamepad and we can choose the left stick because that's usually our movement. Then from our move, we've got the left stick, but we need to use WASD and this is something slightly different. So we'll click the drop down at the top to add a new component and we're going to add a left right composite. And it knows that vector two by default, we're going to most likely want up, down, left, right. You can select each of these different components we have, select up, and then we can press a listen and we can put W. So we want W on the keyboard. We'll have down on the path and then we'll press S on the keyboard, left, listen, We'll have A and then right is D. Then what we'll do right at the top is we'll add a brand new action. So we're going to have this as look. And so on look, we're going to change that from button and we're going to change it to value. And then from value, again, we're going to change to vector two. We'll add a new binding and make sure that we select gamepad and then choose the right stick. We'll add a new component and add a new binding. And this one is going to be our mouse usually to look around. So we'll go and go back to the main page and go to mouse and then delta. Then we just want something for sprinting and jumping. So in this case, I'm just going to set something as jump, select the binding, you have keyboard, or I can listen, press space, and you can see space on the keyboard. We'll add another, and then on our controller, then we can choose gamepad, and then for space is whatever you want it to be. So in this case, it could be button south, because that's just generic to all controllers, that just be an A or an X, depending on which controller type you use. And then I might want something called sprint, which is also can be set as a button. Then the binding is going to be on our controller. We could have the left shoulder button as an example. Also set one for the keyboard so we can listen and maybe I'll set that to left shift. And of course you can add various different inputs. Say if you wanted right shift to do it, if you wanted up, down, left, right to do it, you can add another vector to here, another composite. Do be sure to subscribe to Speed Tutor, throw a like on this video, and make sure you check the links in the description for the massive bundles, which is 60 assets for one dollar each in the last two videos i've created and i'll put everything down below for you you can see in the previous code i referenced various inputs to get the axis and different movement and to be able to do jumping with get key down now we're going to change this to be able to use it we don't need these old inputs anymore but what you are going to need is a private input action asset to the player controls so we're going to reference that player controls we just created under my private fields that I already had. We need to reference every single action. We could use a controller to centralize all this, but this is just an example within this script and I'll do that in my bigger tutorial. So we can call this an input action and then we can just give it a name for all of our actions that we're going to do. So we'll do this for every single one. So I'm going to have four input actions and call the first one move action, next one look action, 
the next one jump action, and the next one sprint action. But the difference is for the move and look, they need to be referenced as vector twos so we can detect them when we need them. So we'll have this as private vector two and have that as the move input and private vector two as the look input. You need to also remember that you're using unity engine dot input system whenever you're using any of the code. Now inside our start method, we need to make some references to exactly what we're going to find. So we need to say the move action is equal to the player controls that we just created. And we're going to find a new action map and we're going to specify the action map. And if you remember, it was called player. And then we'll say dot find action in brackets and quotes, whatever we named it. So we named it move. We need to do exactly the same for the next set of actions. So we just name the, all the actions that we specified find the action map and the action that we want to create. And then we need actually two methods to be able to on enable and disable these style of events. So we'll have one method which is called on enable, then we'll do move action dot enable, look action dot enable, and for the rest, and then we'll have on disable, and we'll have a method called on disable, which is all the actions dot disable. And also it's good to remember to put the initialization for these actions that we're trying to find the controls for in the awake method. Now I'm going to get rid of these vertical and horizontal inputs because we don't need them anymore. And now you can see that my speed modifier had the get key of sprint key. And if we are pressing it, we'll be sprinting. If not, we'll just be doing the normal speed. But in this case, to use the brand new input system, we could do pretty much the same thing. But in this case, we'll say that the sprint action dot read value, if you put in angle brackets float, then add two brackets after there. And if we say greater than zero, the question mark sprint multiplier or one F. So in this case, all it means is if the sprint action is happening. So in this case, pressing the key, we're going to read the value, which is a float value because it's classed as a button. And if it's a greater than zero, it must be being held down. So therefore we can sprint. And if it's not held down, we'll be just moving at normal speed. So we won't be sprinting anymore. And then here we look at the vertical speed and the horizontal speed. But in this case where it looks for vertical input, we're going to call this the move input dot Y. And then we're going to set this to our move input dot X and have that still the exact same information that we had before. And then like here, we had the vertical input and the horizontal input. And we can say that the move input dot Y and the move input dot X because Y up and down X left and right. Now here, when we handle jumping, it had input get key down for the jumping. So this is just a one key press. So we can do this really easily. So if we go into this input, we can say that our jump action dot triggered so if it's at any point it's pressed once, we will do the action that we want to do. Then in the mouse rotation, like we did before, we're just going to remove that line. And then we're going to say that the look input dot X is times by the mouse sensitivity, exactly as we did before. And then in this case, if the vertical rotation that we wanted to do, we'll say that the look input dot Y. And before I just was detecting whether I was using the sprint key to do the interval for the footsteps. So just as we did above, instead of using, if we're detecting whether we're pressing the key, we're just going to say that we're going to read the value. And if it's greater than zero, we probably are sprinting. So we already know. And then what you need to do is make sure that you add your script to the FPS controller, and then make sure you add the player controls object to that player actions or input actions slot. Now you can see that when I'm in my game test, I can jump, but I can't actually move. Now you ask me why that might be is that to detect a movement is because it was a value and it was on a vector two, we need to actually read this value at any time when we want to use it. So in our case, we need to say move action dot performed plus equals context equals, and then a greater than symbol. Then we can say that the move input equals the context dot read value. And in angled brackets, we'll say vector two and make sure you close that up and add a semicolon. And this is a Lambda expression that helps you define an anonymous function that will be created when we perform the event. So if we perform it, just like in anything else, we need to make sure that we've canceled the action just so that it doesn't do it at all times. So we'll do the move action dot canceled plus equals context equal or greater than the move input. And then we'll say vector two dot zero because we're not moving or going anywhere. Now exactly the same for the look action. We need to see if it's performed. We'll do the look input and then we'll read the value. And if we've canceled it, 
vector two will be zero because we won't be moving anywhere. Now, when we press play, we can move around and we can look in the scene. And in my case, I've even got a controller here and I can use this to sprint, jump and look around just as you would. Now you will notice that mouse rotation on the mouse here, you can see that it's crazy speed. And then when I'm on the controller, it's not even anywhere as fast. And there is actually a simple way to fix this. If you go to the player controls and you go to the look of the right stick, you can add a processor where you can actually scale the vector two between the X and Y. So maybe I will set the right stick as I need it to be faster. So maybe two and two. And then on the delta of the mouse, I might scale this to what feels normal. So I did it before, so about 0.2. You could see that mouse sensitivity is much better when I look up and down, left, right. And also the function, maybe this is still a little bit too fast for the controller now, but you can make that much more consistent across. And we didn't actually have to affect our script because there can be one thing in our script which determines the mouse sensitivity. And in the look of the player controls, we can specify what the vector two scale should be so we can match them up more closely. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I will be creating a much bigger tutorial in how to use this for 2D, 3D games, to be able to use this for UIs and navigating, full examples of how to do controller remapping, and so many more examples. So stay tuned for that and let me know in the description if you'd find it helpful. So you can get all this on my Patreon and over 210 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do check out all the links in the description for all the best sales and everything going on for this month, including the big bundles that you might have missed out on. Massive thank you to all my patrons. Big thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.